So I recently watched Maestro, which is the new film from director and star Bradley Cooper about the life of composer Leonard Bernstein, or Ber Bernstein, 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 I think it is. So this is the guy who composed the music for the likes of West Side Story and things like that, you know, pretty big deal back in the day. The film has picked up a nomination for Best Picture at this year's Oscars, so I felt obliged to watch it. And in all honesty, I did really love what Cooper did with A Star Is Born. I thought he did an absolute banging job of directing that movie and starring in it as well. It deserved all the nominations it got. So I was intrigued to see what he would come up with next. And I didn't really know anything about Bernstein other than some of the you know the movies that he'd composed music for. He was gay, basically, uh, and he, he also married a woman. And now, I just want to open up this with you. With, it's a perfect quote, and the film itself starts with this quote. And I think there's a very specific reason that Cooper has 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 chosen to open the film with this quote. But but I think it I think it 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 helps sum up my thoughts on the film, which is uh, so. The quote, and I'll get, get it here because I won't remember it if I try and remember it. It says, a work of art does not answer questions. It provokes them. And its essential meaning is the tension between the contradictory answers. Now, I feel like that's entirely what the film is about. And I think it does raise a lot of questions. Now, whether or not it's any good is a different matter entirely. I think it's a good film. I don't think it's a very good film. I certainly don't think it deserves to be nominated for Best Picture. I think it deserves certain nominations. I think, you know, Kerry, Mull Kerry Mulligan's performance here is really great. Bradley Cooper's performance is pretty great. I think the cinematography is absolutely beautiful. The music obviously is amazing because it's, it was composed by Bernstein himself. There is a lot here to admire. Now, I don't happen to think that the whole thing, I don't think it coalesces into a truly satisfying whole. I, I was bored a lot of the time. I feel the film is overly long. I feel it meanders through a lot of the stuff that it's going through. It just takes ages to get there. I found the second half of the film to be more engaging than the first half. Like I say, it, it just took far too long for me to become too invested in these characters. But what we've essentially got here is a dissection of a marriage that on the one hand worked because these two people genuinely loved each other, but two didn't work at all because th this guy was, was gay and, and more to the point was giving in to his sexual desires as a gay man. And I think for me, that's the crux of it. And I'm sure many people will take something completely different away from this, but I think you always have to come back to that quote. It's all about the questions that art raises. This is, this is a work of art. What questions does it raise? And, you know, the truth from those questions is probably found somewhere within the contradictory nature of, you know, the, the various sides, the various answers and whatnot. So, for me, what I see, and you can call me a judgmental prick or whatever, but what I see here is a commentary on the difference between love and desire and how when you give in to one, the other suffers. I think we can see from the film, I would say that one of the observations you can take away from the film is that love is a choice. Love is a choice that involves sacrifice. Now, whether or not this man was sexually attracted to his wife i don't know you know it, like there's people his, historians who claim that no ultimately th this wasn't a guy who was bisexual he was gay and he ended up in a marriage with a woman for, for whatever reason you, you want to convey now with regards to what i see in the film i see two people who do genuinely love each other now irrespective of his desires towards other men he loved this woman and he made certain choices that are loving, you know, to, to to a degree. Like, and I feel like their marriage or, or the relationship and certain things within the film start to fall apart. Life starts to fall apart when he no longer continues to live within those chosen sacrifices of love, but instead gives in to his desire. There's a scene towards the end of the film and he 
goes to a nightclub with one of his students. And, like, call me whatever you want to call me, but to me it, 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 it was not a pleasant scene to watch. They're just dancing in a nightclub, but it, it, was, it was a bit icky. Because this is an old man. This is a guy who is, yeah, well on in years by this point. And he's dancing in a nightclub in a rather pr provocative manner with a man old enough to be his grandson, let alone his son. And to me, that's just icky. And if we saw that in the context of any other relationship, like if we saw that with, you know, an old guy dancing with a, a young woman in a nightclub, everyone would say, that's icky. That's, 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 there's something wrong about that. And I just think the same thing about this. It perfectly conveys the notion of the, the, the difference, shall we say, between what is love and what is desire. And I feel like too many times during this film, Lenny Bernstein gives in to desire rather than making the decision to love. Now, that, that is what it is. You know, that's, that's the observation I make. That's my takeaway from the movie. That's essentially what the movie is about. That ultimately, when, you know, when his wife was sick, he was there for her. He had to make the choice to love. Uh, that's, that's the difference. Love really has got zero to do with sex. Sex can be a glorious aspect of love, but it is not love in and of itself. So to physically desire someone is not love in and of itself. It's just desire. It's something that, you know, you can make the choice to, to conquer. And, that, and that's not just a crack at you know, homosexual people, that's a crack at heterosexual people as well. People have affairs, you know, they, ha they, they get married, they're in a loving relationship, and they choose to go off with another woman. A man might choose to go off with another woman. Well, that's desire, it's not love. You have the opportunity to make a choice, to be there for your wife, to be there with the person you've chosen to be with. Um, and I don't feel any different about this you know, the characters here in this movie. And I feel like there are times when we're supposed to sympathise with Bernstein because really he's a gay man trapped in a heterosexual marriage. And it's like, well, OK, you made your choices and you clearly love this woman, you know, and we see, we see at times in the film that he clearly loves her. He has a great relationship with her when they first get going. Um, he, she's a companion to him in, in the truest sense of the word. And so I, I feel, yeah... That's ultimately what the film is about. It's the difference between love and desire. And ultimately, whether he was sexually attracted to his wife or not. And I do think, though, you know, based on what we see in the film, there just seemed to be an inkling that he was at least a little bit. Um, but even if not physically attracted, he was still attracted to her as a human being. He still loved her as a human being in the truest sense of the word. Um, and, and for me, yeah, as I say, love versus desire. Which one is more beneficial to a relationship? Which one is, is more rewarding, ultimately, to the human spirit? We're seeing examples of love and we're seeing examples of desire. Where does one take you and where does the other take you? And to see a man in his 80s thereabouts dancing with a, a young man, old enough to be his grandson, looking a bit icky, not really looking all that happy, it, it's just, yeah not quite as rewarding as seeing the moments where he's there for, for his wife who is dying who you know and, and going through the tough times and having a relationship that is of value that is of worth now does that make me a homophobe i'm sure many people would say it does uh if that's the case whatever what do you think you know, have I turned this into something weird? I, I personally, this is what I like about movies. It, it creates discussion. You know, somebody can see something in this that might be totally different. This is what I saw. That could come out of maybe some of my own prejudices. I'm perfectly free to admit that. Um, but for me, it just, it reinforces the notion for me that marriage is healthy. Marriage is good. A relationship with one person is is what we should be striving for rather than giving into our desires. The film itself, not great. It, it's good. It was, you know, I, I got through it over a couple of nights. I have no desire to watch it again. 
it was quite dull in parts um but it was thought provoking in in the best way that movies should be i suppose or in a way that movies should be not the best way because it was the best way i would have been thoroughly engaged and thoroughly entertained throughout so yeah there you go that's my thoughts on maestro what are yours leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching this review and until next time cracking